Hello everyone and welcome to Lakeside and uh, I'm sitting on my stool to rest my weary 70 year old legs. Um, as you all know I had my 70th birthday um, and uh, a week or so ago and we went away for uh, a cruise on for eight days or eight nights um, to Norway and it was absolutely superb. And I've got to give thanks to my darling wife Hazel for organising my birthday month really because she organised a um, a tea, afternoon tea at Carriages as I mentioned before and um, primarily organised the holiday tour to Norway. So a massive thank you there. Um, we had such a fabulous time. and. Uh, so now I'm a 70 year old moaning mingy git. <laughs> so I can moan and be official now. Um, so what happened on Lakeside is really uh, all this week I've been planning and building the roadway over there for the Fuller roadway. Um, and Last time, I think, last time, um, the video showed the bridge going across the uh, gap there at the end of the platform. I had a massive amount of comments on that. Um, <clears throat> and thank you so much for that because there were some really, really useful comments. And um, I've virtually taken them all on board apart from having the central pillars. I don't think people really understood what I meant, why I had left them off. Um, yes, it would have been good to have the central pillars there, would have been perhaps more prototypical, I hate that word. Um, <clears throat> but for the practical running side of it, it wasn't really good uh, because there isn't much space. That's on a curve, um, that section. And because it's on a curve, you have to allow for the carriage, especially long carriages or coaches, um, to go around that curve without hitting anything. If I had put central pillars in there, then they would have to be very, very thin and um, they wouldn't look good, to be honest. So I thought better than that was to leave them out um, and just have it so that it was a self-supporting bridge. Now a lot of people commented and said oh well you need RSJs and columns and things in real life. Well yes I know that um, for obvious reasons otherwise the whole thing would collapse but there is an RSJ at either end it's just that it's clad in um, stone uh, paper. If that isn't convincing enough, what I have thought about was to paint the lower part, which is where the RSJ is, in a red oxide primer to give it a kind of authentic look, if you like, to um, an RSJ being strapped across there. The thing is that every house we live in have some kind of lintels across windows, doorways, garage openings, etc., uh, with RSJs or concrete lintels, but you hardly ever see them. Um, and that's because they are either plastered over or they've got a, a brick cladding um, over the top. <clears throat> and so you don't see them. And that's what I try to do on that. And obviously it didn't work, did it? Because otherwise people wouldn't have said, oh, well, you need RSJs going across there. Um, however, having said that, um, I'm still in two minds whether to do the RSJ in red primer or leave it as it is. I'm kind of erring on leaving it as it is because I know that it's there. And really, I guess that's all what counts. Um, I've seen photographs and people have actually agreed with me that I don't need the central pillars. They've sent me links and actual photographs of 
spans which are wider than that. I've got it spanning four tracks. Um, and they've shown me links or photographs whereby there is a span without any support. So, okay, generally speaking, there are supports, but there are some cases where there aren't. So it's not totally wrong, okay? So, and as it's a model railway, do you know what? I don't really care. You know, it is what it is. It's a model railway. Um, I'm not one of the big boys on YouTube and don't go to the nth degree of making things prototypical. Um, it is what it is uh, and it suits my needs and um, if it's not correct in some way in real life then so be it. Um, it has to suit my needs and because I would rather sacrifice great running than having a coach near missing or even touching a central pillar I know what I'm going to go for. So with that in mind, what I will do, I will spin the camera around and show you what I've done up to date. Um, this week has gone particularly well. Um, I managed to get quite a bit done. And uh, the end result, I think, is looking okay. Now, what I've got showing at the moment is not how it's going to be laid out, probably. Um, something like it but not totally fixed as yet and you will see what I mean when I show you it um, and it's primarily to do with the placements of the buildings um, I've still got some more buildings to get the low relief buildings to pop along the back um, because I haven't got enough yet so when I build the new buildings I may swap the buildings around a bit to um, for my liking um, but this what you see at the moment is all the low relief buildings I've got. So whether I keep it this way or not is another matter. Um, okay, so I think what we'll do, we'll spin the camera around and I'll show you what is over there. Okay, so see you in a minute. Bye. Hello again. Right, so let's start off in the area which I finished off on the previous video. video and that's the right hand section of the roadway whereby we've got the um, archway going across without central pillars but what I was talking about just now that area there is where the RSJ would be but it's clad in stonework so it is there it's just that it's not visible as a RSJ but, um, as I say, it, I, there might look a lot of room with my finger to go in there, but there isn't. Um, if you imagine, well, you can see, it goes around the curve. Now, the overhang of a coach is going to come out here. So I'm not going to have a huge amount of room for a realistic column. Um, hence the reason why I left it off. Um, so that gives you the answers to why there is no central pillars and there won't be any central pillars so I think we'll knock that one on the head now. Um, one person suggested about cutting the archways out. As you know the archways are normally like that on the Metcalf retaining walls. Now I had glued these down, and, but I thought it was such a damn good idea that I thought, well, do you know what? It's worth taking those retaining walls out and cutting those archways out because what you can see is through the archways. So you can see movement through those arches now. And I think that was an absolutely brilliant idea. I wish I'd thought about that beforehand. Um, because it was a, um, it might look easy cutting those out, but the way these are made, um, they're made up of several sections, quite thick, <clears throat> and um, it was an absolute nightmare to cut those out. But I've done it. I've repapered the inside edges here. Let's come around here. 
I've in, uh, repapered all these here. Um, I've got to go through and weather these again and cover up the joins here, the white edges to the paper. Uh, I've got to do that on all the um, retaining walls. But I think that was a worthwhile exercise because that looks absolutely ideal now. I really like that idea. And it also, of course, brings in more light into that area. And I love the way the light is catching on the top of the track. So that's come on well. I'm pleased with that. So that's the end here. And as you can see, my white template is now gone. And we've got MDF roadway now. So if we swing along, you'll see what I've been doing. Totally complete, right up to the last corner at the end there. And all I've got left to do is the bridge here and at the end exactly the same as what I've got here. Same process. So if we take a wander up to this end before I do the middle bit, and this is how it's looking. So again, this time I've cut out the archways as per the other end, going all the way round so that I can see traffic moving through that archway. And the reason I've done that as well is for photographic purposes or video purposes where I can take a shot um, of traffic going through that archway. And here you will notice a downhill section and that's because what I want to do is to take this section out here and carry this roadway down and along and into the village and that will give a, a reason why the village is there it's got access to the roadway so that will be the front edging here with the roadway and obviously leading down to the manor house which you can see here to the entrance so it all makes perfect sense and then what I will do oh, sorry about that. what I will do if you imagine another one of these <coughs> excuse me another one of these here this is from the previous layout this one um, another one the other side to create the roadway and then the houses will be on a hill obviously not sloping but level on a hill and then terraced back gardens along the back until we get on the flat and then these guys can have ordinary flat rear gardens with a small frontage to the road. So that's how that will work and then along the back um, we've got again that retaining wall from there which goes up exactly the same as the other end obviously still yet to be weathered and then if we pan back I've got a, a market house what they call a market house in the middle there um, and this was um, advised by me because I said I was speaking to Jeff uh, the other day and I was explaining to him that I wanted in this area, if I come back a bit, I wanted the, in this area a market scene with traders with their stalls outside. And he said, well, he said, super quick, do a <clears throat> central market house. And I thought, well, okay, I'll have a look at that. Um, I've never built a super quick building before. Um, so it's the first super quick building. And it's actually very, very good. Um, it's dead easy to make up and I think it looks an attractive building and it's absolutely perfect for what I need now this style of building is very commonplace in the old UK towns 
Um, there's one at Peterborough. Um, there's well, there's quite a few dotted around the country. Um, and again, um, on Facebook, I put a picture of this up, and I had several people sent me photographs of different areas they know of, um, where a very very similar style building um, exists. So I'm very pleased with that. Um, I like that. So if you can imagine the roadway coming around here, the fuller roadway, and going back round and along, um, going round this section, and that gives me the loop to come in and back out again. And then there will be, say, market stores going around, shops, people, etc. So that's that. So let's take a look at the middle section. And as you can see, it's primarily retaining walls at the front with buildings at the back. So I will have traffic going up this way and then back along that way. Through to the end, round a roundabout or something, and then coming back again. And the way I've constructed this is I've got to think about cutting the groove for the wire for the um, fella car system. And to try and do it on this, if I step back, to try and use the fuller cutter, which Rob McCrane kindly lent me his. He posted it from America and I received it just before I went on holiday. Um, to try and do that in situ would have been a nightmare, absolute nightmare. Um, so this will all be done on the floor here, because that lifts out all that MDF, it's 6mm MDF, all that lifts out in two sections. And there's the other, there's the join just there. So I'll be able to place one section on the floor here and use the cutter to cut the groove. That's going to make it far easier and more accurate using the cutter than trying to do it in situ on here. Now the other change of plan was, if you remember, um, I said that what I wanted to do is to make these retaining walls removable so that I could do a section at a time of say five or six, I'll be able to lift them out, get my hand in, and perhaps if there was a derailment in there, I could manipulate it from here. But thinking about it, I thought, well, that's gonna be really difficult to do that because if there's a derailment, say on the fourth track back here, I've got to put my, I've got to move the trains out of the way and put my hand right underneath to try and fix it. So I thought it would be a lot, lot easier if I could take the road up. So that's what I've done. All this is now permanently fixed, that's rigid. Um, and what I've done, I've screwed and glued battening all the way along the back edge and also on this retaining wall, making sure that it was level that way and obviously that way too. Um, so that took me probably more time than anything actually was doing the battening accurately so that I got a level roadway both as I say both that way and that way but it's worked out absolutely fine um, it's nice and flat and level so to get the road out what I will be doing is slitting down here the road so that when I lift the road out, I'm not disturbing the housing, pavements, people, it's just purely the roadway. So that will be a section, it's quite a large section, it's probably about eight, nine inches wide um, of roadway, which I can lift out in two sections, from there to there, and from there to there. I don't have to remove this bit, and I don't have to remove, sorry I don't mean to whiz the camera around as quick as that, um, and that section there. So it's only the main arterial roadway 
through here that I need to remove because if I remove that I can get something that side or behind that um, board at the back. So I'll have full access to it so that's not an issue. So it's really just a case of being able to release that roadway here. Um, hopefully I've explained that to you. Um, all I've got to do, it's basically done. I've just got to slice through there and put a batten underneath for it to rest on. Um, and then that'll be it. Uh, right, what else have I done? Okay. I saw this before I went on holiday. I actually saw that house. Timber frame Metcalf house kit, and you've probably all seen them before. Um, but I was thinking about it, I thought, do you know what? If I got three, joined them together, and cut the lower part off here on the middle one, that would make a great old style coaching in. So that's what I've done. And on Google, I, if I can zoom in, I found a picture. <laughs> I just googled um, coaching in courtyards and a mass of photographs came up and I chose this one because I thought it looked um, particularly nice um, so obviously now that is a restaurant pub bar type place with an area outside to sit in um, and I think that's worked out well I like that and obviously I've got to go ahead and again with all these buildings, I haven't done a single one yet, I've got to go and get rid of all the white lines on the corners, get rid of that join there and that join there. Um, probably not much weathering on it apart from the roof, I will weather the roof. What I've tried to do as well, it doesn't really come up on the camera too much, but I've tried to dip the roof line here and here and here to give it a slight bow which old houses and buildings have a slight bow in it just through the aging of the timber they tend to bow in the middle but it's not really coming out on the camera um, anyway let's take the zoom off so that's that new building so I've got three new buildings really relatively new anyway I've got the building up there this one plus the garage as well which I really like that's a nice one that's made by Kingsway models completely different um, build to Metcalf and super quick um, but still a nice kit very nice and lastly but not least um, all my vehicles on my previous layout were kind of 1970 or earlier and I thought well for a modern image like I've got here um, and the layout's going to be more modern image than old um, then <laughs> with the middle and Palmer sitting there of course to prove me wrong um, I thought I'd better get some new vehicles um, so I went through and saw I think it was 14 I counted uh, new vehicles to add a little bit more realism to the street scene um, and I have got a where are they they're up here somewhere oh that's her man ship there has just gone to the posh departmental store there to get some goodies probably a new handbag or something knowing her um, there are, oh there they are um, so I've got an old series of old cars there um, and obviously that is a um, a local run out for a vintage car club so they're kind of lined up against the um, retaining walls and they've all met up to go in to see a film at the cinema over there um, and have a wander around town the other thing I want to do is put a central um, barrier, not a barrier, but a, like a grass, um, I don't 
call it really uh, just a grass area along here in the middle to differentiate between the two parts of the roadway um, so that is obviously got to be done but I won't do that until I've got the roadway down and the groove cut um, and I'll do it then but there will be a demarcation down here of a grass verge running through uh, there's two slits one here up against the pavement and there'll be another one here as well so the roadway will lift from about there and the reason being is that I don't want to disturb electrics because I'm gonna have obviously lighting in the buildings I'm gonna have Belisha beacons for zebra crossings I'm gonna have traffic lights now all those need wiring what I don't want to do is lift a road up with a whole load of wires on it so all the electrics will be in running in this section here for anything like traffic lights or whatever this side they will run just here and electrics for the um, shops and Belisha beacons traffic lights will run in that section now I don't know if any of you noticed in my very early videos when I was building this I left a gap behind here and I left that gap for that reason because what I can do I can bring cables up from that gap and poke them through or I can bring them straight up underneath and that will be for the housing and any ancillaries like as I said traffic lights etc and that's the reasoning for leaving that gap behind and there's probably about inch and a half gap behind there so plenty of room to run cables down to the power points and they will all be run on regulated um, adjustable voltage power packs which are just a plug with a dial on the back you've seen them all um, and you just dial in the voltage you want so I can have 3, 6, 9 and 12 volt and I think 7.5 volt as well um, for LEDs etc uh, that area there I thought was quite nice I may not have to have buildings all the way along because I would like to show that kind of scene too um, and that could be an entrance to a park um, so you know it doesn't necessarily have to have buildings all the way along um, and I've tried to put in a building there just to find out what it looks like because obviously I say keep saying obviously it's not obviously I still want to do the multi-story car park from scale model scenery um, and that will go here and if I can um, depending on what I choose a building here for the entrance to the station I was thinking about having it there but then I thought well it would fit probably but it would block out the view and I don't really want that I want the vista of that shot there without anything in the front here spoiling it so it will either go there or I'm conscious of not spinning this camera too quickly or there that gives me more room to be honest with you uh, up at this end so it's quite probable that the station building will go here and then I can have the extension coming out with an entry point here uh, as regards signals that one you've seen I've now got a home signal to go here that's now come through so I can now fit that and I need to do that before I finish off that because I need the sensors to go just underneath that bridge or well, just by this bridge really here I don't want it bouncing off the light um, from over the top so it'd probably be just level or slightly before the sensors anyway um, of that bridge. 
So I think that about sums it up. I'll stop um, rambling on. If I turn the camera around, you can see that all the trains which are underneath in my storage yard are now over here, waiting to go back in once I've done all the work. So it's quite busy over there at the moment. So I haven't done any running sessions at all because you know it's in a bit of a um, mess at the moment. Um, so there we go. And I think it's starting to look okay. So if we go along here, I'll just raise the camera a little bit. Um, if we go along here, that will give you the idea of that street scene. So there's an awful lot of airbrushing to do now along here and this area as I said to you before this track I've put in just purely as a, a line in to give me an idea of what's going to happen here and up here will be Royal Mail delivery and pickup here will be the turntable and the engine shed and that engine shed's either going to go about there or across here I don't know there's uh, I will work on that when the time comes uh, I'll see in this that signal there and then of course I've got the distance signal for the home signal there that will be up there just about there where my finger is okay so that's about it for now and um, hope you've enjoyed that. I'm sure there will be lots and lots of comments about have I thought about this and have I thought about that. I probably have but I have forgotten to say it. <laughs> um, but um, hopefully, I don't know, maybe the weekend or just after I actually might get some movement and there is. That's the fella vehicle I've got. I've only got one at the moment but um, I'll get that up and running and then I'll hopefully get some more and put on there. Right. Okay, people, uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for commenting. And uh, if you feel like subscribing, please subscribe. But there's no you know, panic on that. If you don't want to subscribe, don't subscribe. Um, okay, so hopefully the next video you will see some movement on here. Okay, so bye for now and have a great weekend. So bye for now. Bye.